So we're going to make a little video on artificial insemination. I first started doing this about a year and a half ago and it was hard to find anything, you know, a teaching manual or a book or a video and what I found was kind of unsatisfactory so I just thought I would take what I have learned since then and put it together for you guys to, to get some idea of what you're trying to do if you want to sell your bull and, and uh, you got a few cows you want to inseminate. So here's a way to start. First off, you got to have a tank. And uh, ABS is the company, absglobal.com. I don't work for them or anything, but it's just they're the ones that help me uh, get all this together. Uh, the tank will hold a lot more semen than I'll ever need. It'll hold hundreds of straws. I just put about 20 in it, but you need a larger tank because it holds a lot more liquid nitrogen. Um, this stuff um, will last, this tank will last about four months, I believe, or three months. He has to come fill up, and then he, I'm on his calendar. Every, you know, he's got me when, it, when it's going to be empty, he'll, he'll know. He'll come out to my farm and fill up. I don't have to be here, just fill it up and send me a bill. And so the bigger your tank, the less frequently you have to get it refilled. So that's the only reason this tank is as big as it is. But uh, the lid hatches like this. This thing comes out, and it's just very cold. I think it's minus 300 degrees. You have to be very careful with it. And uh, these things just lift out right here. And they have uh, straws in them. Little, little containers will stick up, and your straws are in that. You never want to bring a straw out for more than, say, 10 or 15 seconds. There's nothing in this one. My other semen's in a different place. I'm just showing you what's in here. And they just they drop in like that, and they lock down. They're a little hard to get back in sometimes, but that's, that's the basic for the tank, okay? And that's it. That's simple. All right, the next major part of this is a thermos. Uh, it keeps the water uh, between 94 and 98 degrees, which is just right for semen. You don't want to come out here with hot water from your tap and pour it in here because chances are it's a lot hotter than that and you put a straw of semen in it and you just killed it. So you just plug it in and uh, it'll, it's got a green light and a red light and when the green light comes on, the water temperature is just fine. You can check it, you got a little backup thing here. This, this little deal will glow and show you that right now the temperature is about 90 degrees. So uh, I haven't plugged it in yet. It takes about 10 or 15 minutes for it to calibrate and work. It's real simple. You could heat up water in the house and do, you know, save a little money, but I thought this was worth the time and effort. Um, the next thing you got is a syringe. I believe it's what they refer to. These are stainless steel. And I have two of them because they're different inside diameters. Um, some straws are a half a cc and they're a bigger diameter. Some straws are a quarter of a cc and they're a smaller diameter. They're identical in every way, just a, a hollow tube with a plunger. Okay? But depending on what size diameter straw you're needing, what size syringe you need. I'm using, today we're going to be using sex semen and simply they, they try to uh, determine what semen is going to give you a female. And so that semen it comes in a quarter cc, so it's a smaller straw and it's a little more expensive. The straws I'm using cost $30. And uh, okay, the next thing you'll need is one of these. We'll just go take one out and waste it and show you what it is. It comes in a plastic bag like this, all right? And uh, I'll leave it in the bag the whole time I'm using it. And uh, you'll see, we'll, I'm going to go over this and then we'll disseminate a cow and you'll see how all this is used. It's kind of blunt on one end and open on one end. You take your straw, pull it out, and like I say, you need about 10 seconds. You don't need to leave your tank open. Drop the straw in the thermos. It will be at the right temperature. You let it stay for one minute. You take it out. You got a little cutter. You drop the right end of the straw. One end is sealed. The other end has a cork on it. Cut off the, uh, the right end. Don't cut off the end with the cork. And then you'll take the cut end and stick it in here. The cork end will be out here towards you. You stick it up to this blue level and you'll take your syringe and just feed it on up and get it to right about here. Syringe sticks off like this and you just stick it inside your shirt and when you get ready to inseminate the cow, your left arm goes in the rectum. Your right arm, grab your syringe, slide it in the vagina and use your left hand to guide that syringe in the proper location and then just smash the plunger about four inches and it squirts that quarter of a cc, hopefully in the right place. Uh, the mistakes you can make are cutting the straw when you get it out of the tank and not giving it a chance to heat up. I've done that before. Uh, the other mistake you can make is cutting off the wrong end of the straw. I've done that before. The other end mistake you can make is putting the straw in backwards. I've done that before. So uh, I've been doing this for a year and a half. I've had really good success. It's probably taken me twice as many straws as it would a professional, but still it's cheaper than a bull. I don't have the danger of watching my back when I go out in the pasture for my bull. And uh, I've been pretty satisfied with it, and it hasn't been that expensive. The overall cost of everything was about a thousand dollars that included quite a bit of semen and a manual book that they got me and uh, it was very helpful I read over it a lot underlined a lot and went back and checked made notes and it was a big help but uh, 
that's pretty much all the parts. And uh, after we get done, I'll show you the straw we'll have a used one we can we can use, and uh, we'll just explain it a little bit better, and you can you can see how we do it with the cow. All right. Okay. Well, the one in the middle is the one in heat. I've got a patch on her back, and it has been rubbed orange. It was gray a couple days ago, and uh, they started showing signs of heat yesterday afternoon. It means they stand head to tail, and they'll throw their chins over each other's rear ends and start uh, just being more affectionate toward each other and they'll start to eventually start trying to mount each other they'll, they'll get on their back hind legs and, and hop up on the back of the cow and uh, the cows don't like that naturally so the but the one that's in heat will stand there and let another cow get on her back and then the one that they'll, they'll mount each other the one that's not in heat always steps away or runs away or whatever and uh we've been watching them like i said since the daylight this morning and the little one is the one that's, that's allowing the other cows to mount her. It looks like they've about lost interest and quit. And normally the cycle can last, uh, you know, six or eight hours. But I have had one cow that hardly shows no sign at all and it's very short. And this little one right here, they started this last night and she's still going, you know, up until this last hour, they've been doing it pretty steady. You, ideally when you see them in standing heat, meaning the cow is standing for another cow to mount her, you want to wait 12 hours because the egg's got to come down the fallopian tube and uh, come inside the, the uh, uterus. And it, you, know, you want to have the semen there and then the last 12 hours of that process. That, uh, that cycle they call ovulation lasts about 24 hours, I think. That's really one of the most important things if you're keeping the cows and you want to adventure off into this, you've got to know when your cow's in heat. She's trying again, look at her. All right, she's on the other cow, the other cow's standing there. Can you get that, Steve? That's what you want to see. The other cow didn't run away. She just stood there for it. Come on. Come on. Come on. Finally got their attention. Steve, if you can film the patches on their backs. I don't have one on Dolly because I know she's very pregnant. The other two, I got patches on them. This one, they put them on at the same time. Her patch is mostly gray. The stuff that's been rubbed off is because she's in tree limbs and all. See, she won't stand for that. She's not in heat. And Dolly's not standing for it either. Woo. Let's see, she mounted on Dolly's back. Dolly's not in heat. She didn't stay there for it. And see, this patch is still real gray. The few tree limbs in these woods have scratched it off. That one is completely orange. They rubbed it off last night and this morning. So I need to take her to the barn. Come on. I'm going to try to get him to go up the hill. Come on. You see that? She's standing for it. Look at that. That's a good sign. You got that time, didn't you? Now she she don't like it. She's running away. There you go. That's what you got to learn. And it's hard, it's impossible to know if a cow's in heat if you only got one of them. You need at least two. All right, Rose. All right. These are the patches I told you about. They're just peeling stick. You want to make sure that uh, you wash her a little bit on her back. Make sure she's no oil or something. Just wipe it off with a napkin and get her clean. And uh, they're supposed to be gray like this, but you can scratch them. You know, it's like a uh, you can scratch the, the gray off of them, they come orange. And see, yesterday I put this one on her a few days ago, and a limb or two will hit it every now and then and scrape it. But when they're in heat, it'll turn orange like that, bright orange. There's no point in leaving it on her, let her hair grow back. But when you see that, you know they were in heat. Just an extra thing to help you detect their heat, let you know if you missed it. Mm -hmm. 